In this video, I'm going to show you how to georeference a map using QGIS. We will need QGIS eventually, and we will need a base map, a complementary map that is already georeferenced, that is relatively old, and the map that we want to georeference. So let's see how it works. The map that we are going to georeference is a map in the Denver area. That, is, that it shows the city of Denver in 1879. Um, the map that we are gonna use, it's available in the Romsey Historical Maps Collection. And it's also um, available via Google Earth. If we click on this icon after we click on this layer, we can see which map is the one that we are gonna your reference. If you click on the thumbnail, you can see the map on top of the satellite imagery of Google Earth. And as you can see, there are several features that are not uh, visible anymore in current maps or in, in the reality. Um, so these kind of features uh, can help us in, under certain circumstances to georeference uh, our maps, but eventually in places like this one where we don't have uh, features that we can rely on to create control points, it's going to be a little bit hard. So in order to tackle this uh, lack of information, we're going to download complementary maps and this way we can see connections between the old map, in this case, this one, and uh, the modern maps, okay? So, uh, I'm gonna download the maps uh, that we need from this web page that is uh, called TopoView. It's, uh, it's part of the USGS um, portal, and all the maps available here are free of charge. Uh, to download the maps, we need to go to Get Maps, and then you will be able to download the, the, the maps that you require, depending on the scale or uh, the temporality. And as you can see, each tile represents a map. So if you want to download a map, you just have to click on the tile that you are interested, and then the tile is highlighted. And once it's uh, highlighted, you can download the, the image in JPEG format, KMC for a visualization in Google Earth, a GeoTIFF format, or even a GeoPDF, which is a special type of PDF with coordinates. The ones that we need uh, are GeoTIFF, okay? Uh, I already downloaded most of these maps you have as a reference the name of the of the map in this case is Arvada, Derby, Fort Logan and Englewood. Okay and uh, we can also use a map that is is a it's a map to uh, the scale is one to one hundred thousand so uh, I also downloaded this map and as well as this one. And the reason is because even though they are not uh, very uh, precise in terms of scale for the map that we are going to reference, uh, there are some features that are visible in this map, such as the canal, that will help us to put our map uh, within the Denver region. And the next thing we need to do is to download the map that we want to reference. For that purpose, I am using the David Rumsey map collection and the Luna Viewer. So we open the Luna Viewer and then we look for Denver. And we have 268 results. If we want to find uh, the map that we are interested in, we need to reduce our results. In this case, I'm going to use the close where and select Denver, Colorado. The 
you will see several maps that we can use to your reference later on but right now we are interested in this one which is the same one that is available on google earth so we click on the thumbnail uh, we can explore the map uh, with this uh, viewer and we can see all the description of the map here at your uh, at your left hand side and at the bottom if you scroll down you will see the links for download the images so i already download these images uh, normally you want to choose the the download one option rather than this one what you get is this file this file it's a file in a mr seed format that it's a compressed file but the problem with this file is that uh, it's really hard to process for uh, QGIS because since it's compressed uh, QGIS needs to uncompress it every time you move it or you zoom so I'm gonna show you this by dragging this file into the um, panel layers in QGIS which is this one so I'm just gonna drag this file into here now you can see the mob the map in um, in QGIS but if we move the map if, if we pan the map you can see that it takes time for QGIS to display it uh, or if we zoom in it's a little bit faster but still it takes more time that uh, than if you were using a TIFF uh, file so what I did to create the TIFF file which as you can see it's uh, much larger um, is right click on the layer go to export save as select the GOT format which is the default format then you need to put a name and choose a folder where you uh, want to save this map so in my case I saved it with the same name of the seed uh, file but the extension uh, I added dot tiff once you do that um, well in this case uh, it's asking me if I want to replace the file but once you, you do that, you just have to press OK. Now I'm going to show you the T file. It's identical. The only difference is that if I remove the seed file, I'm just going to deselect it and I'm going to display the T file. You can see that it displays much, much faster. Now I'm going to put again the seed file. You see there, there is a lag. So I'm just going to remove this file by right click on this layer and then remove layer. The process of uh, transforming the seed file into TIFF uh, takes about one or two minutes. So just be patient. Now, once you have your, um, your file here, you need to um, add the maps that are already your reference that will help you to uh, to your reference this map. So I already downloaded the maps that we will need uh, are these maps. All these maps are in TIFF format. You just have to um, es extract all the files that are uh, within these files, which is what I did here. And then inside each folder, you will see four files. The image itself in TIFF format. The world file, um, this has uh, the, the coordinates that are translated from the image coordinates alone to uh, real world coordinates. 
this file is uh, a standard in GIS and um, basically uh, it can be read by every single GIS uh, software. This file, the PRJ, it's also a coordinate uh, file, but the main difference between this one and this one is that this one, um, it's, um, it's uh, for ArcGIS. So basically what they are giving you is a, a file that you can read directly in GIS or in every other uh, GIS program. And finally, you have an XML file, which uh, includes the metadata of this uh, map. If you want to see what is inside uh, of these files, you can uh, open them in a notepad. For instance, I have a notepad++ plus plus, uh, program that is very useful for this, but you can use uh, any, any notepad that you that you know. So if you just drag the files into this program, you can see what it's, what's inside. This is the PRJ file. And the metadata of the map is the XML. And here, I don't have a metadata viewer, but here, uh, if you open it like, like this, you will see the description of the topographical maps from USGS. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is to put these maps into uh, QGIS. So uh, it's relatively easier just to drag the image into the layers um, panel, but you can also go to this um, icon, which is the layers um, toolbar. If you click on it, you will see this window and then you just have to select the image files that you want to add to the layers panel. So you click on browse and select the, the, the file that you want to add. So in this case is this one. And the only reason I know uh, is this one is because it's an image file. But if you want to filter what kind of files are presenting uh, are visible, you can change this here in, in the selection uh, box. And as you can see, there are plenty of file formats in QGIS. In this case, is a GeoTIFF. And you just see the actual image. So I'm going to add Arvada. Every time you, um, you select one file, you need to press Add. And now these files have a coordinate system that was created by USGS. So that's why uh, QGIS is asking you which kind of transformation from this coordinate system into WGS is gonna be used. So the default is okay. So you just have to press okay. And then I'm gonna repeat the process for uh, all the files that I downloaded. I'm gonna add Derby. So again, if, uh, if you find this method uh, slow, you can just drag the, the image to this panel. So in this case, uh, I ended up in Englewood. I'm gonna add Fort Logan. So I just need to drag it. And then finally, West Denver. You don't have to see the program. You can just drag it to the program. And once it's again visible, you just drop it. Okay, so once we have everything in place, uh, we can explore these maps. So I'm gonna zoom in the West 
no, the East Denver map by right clicking on this layer and then zoom to layer. Okay, here it is. But we can also see the other maps because are in the same location. So East Denver and West Denver are our base maps uh, with a big scale and the rest of the maps with names Fort Logan, Inglewood, Arvada and Derby are the low scale maps. So the first thing I want to do is to cut these margins of these maps so we can have a better uh, image of this area because right now it's impossible to see what is happening here. It's a, a very straightforward process we just need to create a polygon that encompasses only the map area and then uh, do a clip. So to do that, we have to go to the menu layer, create layer, and I'm going to create a new temporary scratch layer. I'm going to call it clip. And then the geometry type, it's going to be polygon. And I'm going to leave this as it is. And I'm going to press OK. As you can see, a new layer was added to the panel. And it's already in edit mode. And you can notice that because it has a little pencil. Uh, you can activate this mode by clicking the pencil here in the editing toolbar. So if I press this pencil again, the pencil here disappears. So now it's not in edit mode uh, anymore. But I want to edit this layer. And then with this icon, I can add my polygon. So I'm going to start with this map. To zoom in and zoom out, and if you have a mouse, just uh, scroll the, the, the wheel uh, in the center of your mouse, or use these uh, tools. So this is to zoom in, this is to zoom out, uh, the hand is to pan. If you want to pan with your mouse, you have to press the, the wheel in the middle of your mouse. Um, if you want to zoom in, just select the area that you want to zoom in. And if you want to zoom out, you can either just click on the map or create a selection area. And the larger the selection area, the less you will zoom out. The smaller, the larger uh, area that it's zoomed out. So. I'm interested in here and I'm going to add a polygon so I'm going to just click on here to create the polygon and I don't know if you can see it but there is a, um, a line because it's a polygon uh, we need at least three vectors to create the polygon right now we're going to create other three because this is one two and now you can see that the polygon is starts to appear now this layer is um, on the way so we just need to deselect it Finally, the last point. And in order to uh, create the polygon, you just have to right click. So now our polygon is created. Now you can just uh, toggle the editing mode. 
and we save our uh, edits and now uh, if you have not the processing toolbox here in the um, in the right hand side so like that you can activate the processing toolbox by going to the menu processing and then click on toolbox once it's visible uh, click here in search and look for clip and what you want to use is a GDAL um, a GDAL model that it's called clip raster by mask layer so double click and then the input layer is the the map that we want to cut so in this case it's Arvada. The mask layer is the clip layer, the polygon layer. And we can just leave these uh, other uh, options like that. We are going to create a temporary file. This is just for the purposes of um, georeferencing. If you want to uh, create a permanent file, you just have to go here and click save to file select a folder where you want to save this and uh, it's already in tiff but you can change the format as well so i'm just going to create a temporary file it won't take too much time to uh, do the clipping actually it's already done but you can still see the window you just have to close it Now, it still looks the same. We are going to deactivate the clip layer and we're going to deactivate the, the original layer. And we ended up only with the clipped mask. And we can do the same thing for the other uh, maps. So this was Arvada, so I'm gonna put it uh, close to the clipped mask. If you want to have um, uh, a name to refer to this mask, you can right click on the layer and rename it. So I'm gonna call it Arvada. So I'm gonna deselect these two layers and I'm gonna go for uh, Fort Logan. Now, if I want to uh, create a polygon here, first I need to remove this polygon or move, the, move it. Uh, I'm going to talk about this later uh, in, in, uh, in the vectorial part of these uh, videos. But uh, right now we're going to just edit in, uh, toggle editing mode for this layer. And then with this tool, which is the selection tool, the selection toolbar here so if it's not activated just right click on every in 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 an empty space in this area and then select selection toolbar and then you will see it the first icon allows us to select uh, our vectors so i'm gonna select this file well this um this polygon and then i'm gonna uh, delete it with the delete button or we can use this icon once it's deleted we can create another polygon so I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna repeat the process and I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of the maps
okay once we have everything uh, coated um, we can just display the maps that are clipped so in this case just the ones that we just created and now we can see the mosaic okay so now what we want to do is to put uh, at least preliminary the map that we want to georeference in this area uh, so it will be easier to georeference it so I'm going to start with the maps that are actually in a, a much higher um, scale so I found out that the East Denver map it's going to be useful because it includes the canal okay so I can close this now and then in order to georeference we need to open the georeferencer which is available in the menu raster and then georeferencer your reference here used to be a plugin in uh, QGIS, but they decided just to include it as a normal uh, tool. And this is the reason it's a different window because originally it was a plugin. Uh, in order to start working with our map, we need to add it to this window. To do that, we need to press this button. So to open the raster and then we need to select the map the map that we downloaded from the David Rumsey map collection but that we change into TIFF format so we open it and once we see the map we can start georeferencing uh, but the first step we need to do is to um, to make some configurations for the georeferencing so if you go to this uh, engine and click on it it's a transformation settings we just need to be sure that uh, the transformation type is linear which is the first order of transformations and these two values are gonna remain the same but we need to uh, create a new file for processing so in this case I'm I want to create a file called the same way as the original tilt file plus modified once you do that uh, you can start working you just have to press OK so your referencing is about creating uh, control points what is a control point basically is any single point on this map that we want to georeference reference that is uh, visible in a modern or more modern map or uh, any single map that shares uh, shares some character uh, same features that are visible in in this map so i'm gonna start by making this map more visible like that and one of the things that I noticed by exploring these maps is this uh, canal is this canal this canal is also visible in this map uh, how do I know that? well basically because of the shape but we need to be sure that what we are seeing is actually the same thing so I'm gonna zoom out just to double check if I am correct it the in this map is called so in this map is called Highline Ditch and there is a reservoir here so I really don't know if this is the actual map 
maybe it's not maybe actually the 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 map the the the, the stream that i am be, i am seeing is this one which it doesn't have a name but as you can see the shape it's it's closer look this curve it's similar to this one and then you have this part and then you have this bump which is this one and then you have this wobbling line which is this one and then turns and then turns it turns it continues and then enter to the what it looks like the 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 river which in this case they call it cherry creek and i think is here so i'm just gonna put a point in the place that i think it's uh what i'm seeing so in this case i'm just it doesn't really matter how accurate is this first point so i'm gonna choose this one like the the crest of this um of this line and i'm gonna click on it uh i'm gonna click but first i need to I click on this icon which is the icon to add points the next one is to delete points and the next one is to move points so I need to add a point I'm gonna put one here and then it's gonna appear this window if I know the exact coordinates uh, of this point uh, regarding the the coordinates that I'm using so in this case if you go to transformations the target SRS is WGS84 so if I knew the coordinates of uh, the precise coordinates of the point that I am adding I can uh, just write them in this uh, coordinate system but in this case I don't know the coordinates so I'm just gonna click and instead of writing coordinates here I'm gonna call I'm, I'm gonna click on from map canvas and then our map it's gonna it's going to disappear and we're gonna see only the main QGIS window and then I just need to click on the area that I think it is the the same feature which I think is this one so then once I click as you can see the coordinates the coordinates are written for us and then we just need to click OK and this is how we create the first point um, now what we just did is to translate the coordinates of the image without in, in the in its own coordinate system which is a random coordinate system on pixels which is these ones and we translate that into real world coordinates which are these ones right now we don't have residual pixels now what kind of coordinates are these ones well these are the coordinates of the image without your referencing in this case we can uh, see this um, the, the extent of this image by right clicking on the on the layer properties and in the information um, tab we can see the extent this is the extent of the image and the extent is basically the um, the corners of our image in pixels so this image so to speak has a width of 10,765 pixels and a height of 8,050 pixels which is roughly this these are the coordinate system okay I'm gonna cancel so this is our first point that, that are not very accurate we just need to count how many points are we going uh, we are going to create that are like dummy points so for instance um, I'm gonna say that this river meander 
this one is this one I don't know if that's it, that is true but I'm just gonna assume that that is correct so I'm gonna click here from map canvas and then right uh, click here and then okay so now I have two points now the problem with two points is that we just we're just gonna shrink the map vertically but not horizontally so we will have a, like a stripe of, of a map so we need a third point um, let's see what else uh, well pro probably we can use again the river let's see uh, well the problem is that we don't have a feature that it's uh, easy to recognize so actually even though it's not uh, recommendable to um, recommend it to uh, put the points very close when you are starting to make the georeferencing uh, I'm gonna put a point in the in the creek or the canal again but in order to put it uh, further from this point I'm gonna put it um, more or less here when it's turning to the east so I'm gonna click here from map canvas and here okay and now I'm gonna press play which is gonna start your referencing this is just a preliminary step in order to put our map close to our area of interest so basically we are translating the image coordinates or the source image coordinates into the WGS real world coordinates and now we have residual pixels residual pixels basically mean pixels of the uh, once the, the map is starting to shrink or uh, transform uh, the distance between the source point and the destination points can be measured by means of deformation so this this is what uh, are called residual pixels you will you will see that later on because with three points is not uh, very visible so I'm gonna click here and now in here we can see that the map it's uh, it, it appeared the problem is that we cannot see it because it's covered by the East Denver map so I'm just gonna drag this map to the bottom and there you go now it looks okay so uh, this is a preliminary georeference map so it's this map is already your reference but we want to improve our uh, your referencing so now it's time to put our um, low scale maps so I'm gonna deactivate the East Denver map and I'm going to um, the modified map I'm gonna put it to the top and I'm gonna activate the clipped maps and then I'm gonna zoom in into this region and yes there you go um, so now what we have here is the map that we already your reference preliminary and the low scale maps on the bottom this way is easier to your reference the map so now I think the best way for this map uh, to uh, create uh, accurate control points is to use the corners of the blocks we will never know if the corner of the blocks in either map is actually showing you the corner of the buildings or the corner of the whole block which includes the footpath so what I'm gonna do is to move this map to the same region so let's say 
in this uh, in this area and let's start seeing similarities between these maps so as we can see the river already changed so this um, this part of the river which is uh, this is a, a river uh, a, a river formation called um, anastomosis uh, is not here anymore so it disappeared so apparently the river was already canalized uh, and also this uh, curve or this meander is not uh, is not there uh, if we compare it with the East Denver map so I'm gonna so as you can see this shape disappeared and it's not there anymore so now in order to to avoid clicking on each of these maps we can group them so I'm gonna uh, select all of them with control I don't know the, the, the exact key on a Mac but with Windows is control and then I click on each of these maps and then I'm gonna right click and then uh, I'm gonna group selected this way I just need to click on this on the group to present the maps okay so uh, let's focus on the blocks so we can see that the that there are some railways here and we just need to see features that may be linked uh, by exploring this map before I noticed that this area is uh, it's, uh, it's quite clear which is this one so this is the railroad this is the railroad and then we have these squares and then we have these these ones so I noticed that there are some some ones uh, that I uh, have a shape of a triangle so for instance this one particularly this one and I'm pretty sure that this triangle is the same as this one and the reason I know that is because it's a it's a succession of triangles so you have this one and then this one and then this one divided in two so now we have one two and three and this is the the, the one that was divided in two so I'm gonna focus on the smaller on the, on the smallest and I'm gonna click in the apex of the triangle and then from map canvas and then I think it's this apex here can you can you see it and then I'm gonna go with OK and as you can see now we have a red line here this is the pixels the residual pixels so now we have a problem but it's because the other three points are dummy points so we're gonna get rid of them but not not yet we need to find at least other two points that are accurate so in the same line if I just continue into this direction I will notice that um, we have this uh, this pattern and it's uh, it's still here so maybe this line it's this one and how can we uh, be sure about that well counting the blocks one two three four five one two three four five now if we are completely sure about that 
then we can uh, add our point. So I'm gonna use the corner of this block and then I'm gonna use the corner of this one. So okay, we still have this error, but if you notice, now we have uh, more or less the same error in all our points. We will get rid of the first three, but once we get the third accurate point. Now, the problem here is that we need a point far away from these two. So our transformation is going to be better. So let's see, I'm going to activate the preliminary georeference map just to see the extension. Um, and let's see, I'm going to go more or less, um, well, let's see, let's see here. Okay, what's happening here? There's something that is called Clover Park. Uh, let's see if Clover Park is visible in the other map. Well, that, there, is, there is a block, but we are not sure about this uh, block. So we need to find another. But we have this, uh, the Cherry Creek. Let's see if uh, it's visible. Uh, oh, it's because we are in a different area. Let's see. So this is the Cherry Creek. And now the Cherry Creek is here. No, it's not going to work. Okay, let's see this. The capital. The capital hasn't changed. So let's find the capital in this map. Oh, perfect. So here it is. The capital square. So we can just use a point in the capital. Um, so this is Clover Park Capital Square. Okay, I'm gonna choose the top right, uh, the top right corner. No, the top, uh, the bottom, bottom left corner from Map Canvas, and then I'm gonna use. As you can see, there is a, a curve here. So I'm gonna use just the corner here. Okay. Once we have these three points, I would like to add a fourth one. Let's add a fourth one before we remove the other three. And the problem is where? So let's move. Let's move into this area near to the to the lakes. Okay, let's see. Well, we do have the lakes here. Uh, I would like to to choose one of these blocks, but we need to find them probably are these ones. So if we take into consideration these avenues that possibly are still there. Yes, probably is this line and this line, the con county road, which here it's called Cal Colfax Avenue. And this one, which it doesn't appear with a name let's see conejos um yeah i think this these blocks these blocks are these ones so i'm gonna click on my reference map on the bottom right corner here and then on the bottom right corner here so let's see what happened 
so I'm gonna delete these the first three points so I'm gonna right click on this point and then I'm gonna put remove and then remove and then remove as you can see as we were removing these points the residual pixels were also reduced because basically uh, the problem is that we had dummy points but now that we have residual pixels that are based on accurate data uh, our, the, 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 the error is less so we'll see now I'm gonna run this again and there you go oh no this one this uh, so you have now both maps the dummy map which is this one and the one that has been corrected so I'm gonna delete the one that is incorrect and then let's let's compare it perfect so let's compare it with the with the river well the river has changed a lot uh, but I think it's incorrect I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna add it again because I'm not sure if uh, I removed the, the correct one so it's this one uh, but still looks weird uh, let's see what we can do here I'm gonna delete the last point because I think it's not very accurate I'm gonna run this again <coughs> uh, let's compare it yeah I think this is more accurate um, hmm. oh okay so this avenue is correct so we can select this part so we double check is 36 I'm gonna use the bottom right corner and the bottom right corner and I'm gonna run this again and there you go I think it looks very good yeah even the lake it's now in line the most important part of your referencing is that you don't want to invent features that you think they are there for instance when I thought that this avenues where uh, one uh, crossroads that I saw in the other map uh, actually I was uh, I was in an error you see I thought this line here was this line here and I needed to delete my last point I'm gonna try to find another spot
are some blocks here that pro probably are very good for your referencing because are far from the other points uh, yes excellent so this block these blocks are the same you can see that these are small squares and the same are here so it's one two three four five one two three four so we have only four here so we just need to be sure that we are not uh, changing this so in order to avoid confusion i'm going to count from the bottom to the top but uh, i'm going to choose 17. and the bottom left corner so in this case what would be one two three four five one two three four five so this is one and okay excellent so we do have a errors these are our errors and we can reduce the errors by uh, modifying the transformation right now we have been using the linear transformation which is the the simplest one but we can change that for instance to polynomial one which uh, includes some other types of transformation we're going to change that and then we're going to run it let's see what happened I'm going to zoom the extent of this layer. So, yes, it did something in the map, but the problem is that you can see that the map now is a little bit um, uh, skewed. So, one of the problems with uh, your referencing is that you will transform the map. Uh, and sometimes the transformation is so um, is so evident that basically you are transforming also the original features or the map itself. So actually, if I change from polynomial one to polynomial two, uh, probably we don't want to force the map to be okay with our control ground points because you can you just start putting the map in a very weird shapes uh, we can also use the thin plate spline or the polynomial tree but we will need more points spread out over the all over the map so for instance point in the corners here 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 so we can have control points that are gonna help our map to stay in place rather than be twisted or curved or whatever uh, I like the projective transformation but only when you have also points in the corners uh, in this case you will notice uh, what happened when you don't have enough points oh actually I like this possibly is it's okay because sometimes with the projective transformation, if you don't have enough points in uh, in the corners, you will create like um, like a trapezoid. So you have to be careful with that. So I'm gonna remove all this. Yeah, actually, it's not bad. It's not bad because, as you can see, it's not a twister or skewed or curved. Uh, let's see and now actually the, the the river looks good and the blocks look okay so I'm gonna check the blocks in this area yeah the, they look all right but are not very so I'm gonna put another point in in this area
But there you go. Uh, I hope the video is clear. It takes time because it also requires uh, a historical work and you have to explore the maps and you have to see the differences and you will notice that the, uh, some changes are not only spatial but also uh, um, onomastical. For instance, I notice that some street names change completely. For instance, here, uh, originally these, um, these streets were named Gallup, Vincent, Wall, Goss, Bowers, Vine. Uh, but now these streets are called, um, at least in this map, I don't know, uh, in, in modern times, but they were called Suni, Clay, Tejon, Pecos, Lipan. So that's also interesting, not only to, to compare how the landscape features have changed, but also how the, the, the names have changed. And from the perspective of the of the water, well, you can see that the river in the 40s was canalized, whereas in the 1880s was still like a, like a natural river. Also, another thing that was uh, transformed was the Cherry Creek, which also was canalized. But if you see it in the 1880s, uh, the creek was still uh, at least partially visible as a natural feature. The cases where you want to improve the georeference is that if you go to the field and you find one of these old features that are not visible anymore, but you know the exact coordinates of these uh, features, for instance, the creeks or the railroads or um, or the churches. Basically, you can just click on, on the feature that you want to uh, add to your control points and then add the coordinates here. Uh, but uh, so it's it's a good practice to save the, the ground control points. So I'm going to go to the uh, engine. And OK, I, I just wanted to be sure that save ground control points is uh, selected because that means that in our folder, the 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 file, the T file is saved, but also the, the ground control points are saved. The ground control points, it's another text file, but they can be loaded into uh, into here uh, if we want to use the original image and then we can resume the um, the georeferencing but yeah basically that's it the points are, are already uh, saved we can uh, double check that if we open them in a notepad for instance so here are our points it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Uh, yes, we have eight points, including the, the ID zero. Excellent. So now we have a map georeferenced that we can use for comparison purposes. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope this hasn't been uh, very long, but your referencing takes time. So I hope you like this uh, video, and well, let me know if you have uh, something to say in the comments section.